This is the ethics review class for the Doctor of Chiropractic program at Parker University. My name is Jesse Green. I'm an attorney. I practice in Plano, Texas and have been associated with Parker University since uh, 1990 and have taught classes to uh, in the chiropractic program and in the continuing education program since 1992. Uh, so I'm familiar with chiropractic. I'm also familiar with the legal issues that chiropractors have to deal with. The objective of this class is to provide you a, a very general knowledge of some of the regulations that will apply to you when you graduate and begin practicing. These vodcasts have been placed on YouTube. So even after you graduate, they should be available to you. I hope you will find that some of the information from time to time may be a helpful reference. Keep in mind that I'm not trying to keep these, uh, this information up to date. So you may need to update the information and make sure you're referring to current regulations rather than the regulation that I used when I prepared this program. The general topics we're going to review in the program uh, first thing I'm going to do is review 12 basic licensing board rules. Now, I think you will find rules similar to these in almost all of the 50 states and the Canadian provinces. Um, because I practice in Texas and I'm most familiar with the Texas rules, we're going to use the Texas rules as, as a model for our review. Um, if you need to identify rules in another state, I recommend that you go to the website for the Federation of Chiropractic Licensing Boards. Their website is fclb.org. On their website, they have links to the state licensing boards web pages. And I believe that on almost all of them, the state licensing boards will have links to their statutes and regulations. If not, you can go to that specific state's uh, website and probably find the relevant statutes and regulations. So we're going to review the Texas rules as just a general overview. I'm also going to talk a little bit about employment. Uh, my experience is that many chiropractors graduate from chiropractic college and go into business fairly shortly after they graduate and are not familiar or haven't really thought about the process of hiring employees, supervising employees, and terminating employees. The third major topic we'll talk about are, are leases, both office leases and equipment leases. We will talk about some of the issues that you may be able to negotiate. I will also want to make you aware of some of the clauses in those documents that you will not be able to, to negotiate, but you need to be aware of anyway. Uh, HIPAA, of course, has to do with patient confidentiality. We'll talk about record keeping and keeping those records confidential. Uh, business entities, whether you do business as a sole proprietor, a corporation, or a limited liability company, or a partnership, may affect the way you run your business and may affect your liabilities if something were to go wrong. So we're going to talk about the best way to protect yourself. Speaking of protecting yourself, we're also going to talk about malpractice. Um, again, my experience has been that most chiropractors or graduates or students uh, are much more frightened of malpractice claims than they should be. Chiropractic malpractice is extremely rare. Uh, generally, only about two chiropractors out of a hundred are involved in litigation at any particular time. So it's not a very common occurrence, and we'll talk about why that is when we talk about malpractice and what the plaintiff needs to prove to be successful in a malpractice case. Uh, finally, we'll talk briefly about malpractice insurance. There are a few things about malpractice insurance that you should be aware of. You should understand the difference between an occurrence policy and a claims made policy. The pricing or the premiums may be different on those policies, but that may also be because you're receiving a different quality of product. So the 12 licensing board rules that we're going to review are on this list here. 
Now, some of these rules I will tell you are very basic. Um, and I almost feel a little foolish that I have to remind you about some of these rules. But the Texas Board publishes a newsletter, and in that newsletter they publish the names of chiropractors who have been disciplined, and they publish the reason that they were disciplined. And as I go through these rules or, or see those notices in their newsletter, I see that a lot of chiropractors seem to be receiving disciplinary action, paying fines, uh, and sometimes getting their licenses suspended over violations of some rules that are really very simple, very basic, that they should be able to follow quickly. A few quick comments on the video presentations. I have tried to break these videos up into a number of short presentations. Uh, that way you can watch a little bit, as much as you can tolerate anyway, and uh, uh, not make too much of a time commitment for most of these uh, videos. Um, I also recommend that you use the video format to your benefit. Uh, if there's something you uh, don't understand very well or something that I talk about while you become distracted, feel free to use the rewind button. Go back and play it again until you understand it uh, and you're satisfied with your understanding of our, of our discussion. Uh, please also feel free to fast forward or play at a faster speed than normal. If you believe it's helpful to you, if you can keep up at that faster speed and it can save you some time. Uh, the other thing again about these videos is I'm posting them on YouTube. I don't know how long YouTube will continue to ho host these videos, but as long as I continue to host them, uh, they will be available to you as a reference. So even after you graduate, you are more than welcome to refer to these. Uh, but please remember that these are not a substitute for legal advice. I'm only providing you with very general information about the issues we're going to talk about. And please also remember that by listening to these videos, we are not creating an attorney-client relationship. I'm not representing you. If you uh, need representation uh, on a matter that, that is uh, occurring in Texas, you are welcome to contact me and we can discuss it at that time.